Thank you. Uh, as, as said, I'm Russ Warner, CEO of Content Watch. We're the makers of NetNanny. <clears throat> you may have heard of NetNanny. It's one of the uh, parental control software leaders in the industry today. Parental control software is just one tool in many that you need to help those who are addicted to pornography. We also like to think it's a very uh, effective preventative tool. Uh, NetNanny is a parental controls solution, as I mentioned, and basically what these solutions do, and there are others, which I'll mention in a second, they basically keep your kids or your or adults off uh, certain websites when they're on their Windows or Macintosh machine. Um, it helps control how much time is spent online, and you can also do things like monitor for cyberbullying or sexual predator uh, communication going on with your kids. Um, <clears throat> uh, others, other solutions out there similar to NetNanny, which by the way is the, uh, the award-winning product, uh, three years running with PC Magazine's Editor's Choice Award, seven years running with top ten reviews. I, I encourage you to check out top ten reviews so you can see exactly why we are rated the way we are. Other solutions that we consider viable uh, competition are Canine and uh, Safe Eyes. Russ, you're going to have to just speak up a little bit more um, because okay. of the distance of the mic. Just speak up a little bit more. Let's go in faith for a few people. Okay. <laughs> uh, a couple of things I'd like to mention, though, about, uh, about this issue is that there are many solutions out there or many tools out there to help you with those who are addicted to pornography. Um, Nanny Nanny is just one of the many tools you can use. But what, what it does help you do is to keep those who are affected and who are willing to, to work toward a change in their life, it keeps them away from from websites that are just not great places to go. Of course, if someone has a problem, they'll find additional methods or ways to find pornography. One of the solutions that we're also working on, and there are not very many out there today, are for mobile devices. Kids have smartphones today, and they are uh, typically Android phones or iPhones or iPod touches. Those are pretty much open to, to it's, it's wild west really. Kids can pretty much, and, and adults can get to any website they choose. So we are working on versions for Android and for iPhone, iPod Touch and iPad, which will launch in the, in the fall. Um, we have also launched a couple of months ago a program which, I'll, which I refer to as Addict Sponsor Program, which you can access from our website, which is netnanny.com. It's basically a free license to addicts who have a sponsor helping them with the challenge that they're facing. The reason that we need a sponsor is because when you get to a web page that you're being blocked from viewing, and basically NetNanny will categorize every website you attempt to visit. And so if a website comes up, uh, categorizes pornography, the, uh, the person who's viewing using NetNanny will be blocked, and they'll have the option to either ask for permission to go there or basically go away. So the addict sponsor, or the sponsor is the person who would be, the, who would be communicated with if the person wants to go through to that site. So there might be times when a, a website is blocked for other reasons, whether it's uh, drugs or alcohol or any other type of website, and that's why a sponsor is needed. If you go to our website and click on the Learning Center link on the main menu, you can request a free license. It's a 12-month license, uh, and we'll send you the license you can install. Uh, the, uh, the sponsor needs to set up a password and some other credentials. That way that the addict or the person affected won't have the ability to get in and look around. Uh, another, another tool that we're adding to the arsenal is that uh, next month we're going to be launching a, an education program. I know a lot of parents are a bit concerned about their lack of ability to keep up with technology. Kids seem to find ways to circumvent the controls that we might put into place. Kids are pretty good about finding a, or communicating with each other if they find a way around uh, a certain, let's say, a rule or a certain uh, software that you've got installed. So next month we're launching a, a training and certification program which we hope that will be a solution or a resource for PTAs or other groups who simply want to become either a parent or a sponsor, who want to become more up to date on some of the challenges on the web. And that includes pornography addiction, that includes cyberbullying, that includes uh, sexual predator uh, communications. It also just includes ways that kids and teens and adults are using to circumvent the tools and solutions that, that others put into place. So you can look forward to that. It's a free training program. We will offer it as a certification program in the event a group wants to, to take their understanding to a higher level and assure that their, their group is at a certain uh, base, base knowledge level. And that's why we have certification. One more thing I'll mention very quickly. When you consider um, parental control solutions or internet filtering solutions, there are many out there on the market today who use what is called the URL list. It's basically a, a big list 
of all the bad websites that exist in the world. The challenge with having a list like that is that new websites pop up every day. And some domain names or URLs can one day be a new site and another day become, uh, let's call it a bad site. Uh, what NetNetty does, or what we use, is called dynamic contextual analysis. And basically that means that any time you go into your browser and you type a series of words or, or you type the, the uh, domain name or the URL name for a website, we go to that website in real time, check out the content of that site, and we categorize it. If it comes back categorized as news or entertainment or sports, we typically let that site go through and let the uh, end user see the, the content. But if the site comes up as pornography, adult, mature, lingerie, or the, any of the other categories that a parent or a sponsor deem inappropriate, then those are blocked. So the, one of the benefits of NetNanny is that we don't rely on static lists of web pages. We try to check the content each and every day, and each and every time you try to get to a, to a certain web page. All right, Russ, yeah, let's take a, there's kind of a, there's a few questions that have come through, somewhat of a theme, again, that's being established here, but given that there are some free systems out there, mm -hmm. what would you tell the audience as far as the difference between what you guys offer and the free systems? What's, what's the reason people are paying money? What's the value for them there? So, there's a lot of value when you consider that you have the ability in NetNanny to set up alerts and reports. Um, alerts and reports allow you simply to keep keep in touch with what's happening in real time. Some of the free solutions don't allow you to keep in touch or review the web pages that have been blocked. We also have, uh, NetNet is one of the few filters that have the ability to block proxy web pages. Now a lot of kids, in, well, a lot of people have determined or figured out how to use a proxy website, which is basically just a website within a website to circumvent any filter that you've got. So basically you go to a web page, then find a proxy website, once you're in the proxy, you can search any web page you want to go to. You go there undetected. You go there without, without creating a trail. And you can basically go to any website in the world that you want to go to. We block pro proxy websites. We, do a lot, we have a lot of other circumvention prevention measures. It's very difficult to get nan nan Nanny off your computer. Uh, we get a lot of hate mail from children and adults who don't like the fact that we keep them out of the places they shouldn't be. And that, that, that's one of the reasons that we know that we're doing a good job. The higher the hate mail, the better job we're doing. Great. This is a, another question. This one comes specifically from Elizabeth. She said, can you set up your Net Nanny account to protect all of your devices that connect to the internet? So phones, game consoles, etc. Any thoughts on that? We've thought a lot about that. <laughs> uh, we are working diligently on getting an Android and an iPhone version, or iPod Touch version. We will have a, a console where a parent or a sponsor can go and, and keep track of the Windows machine or Mac or Android device or I, iOS device. We don't have a solution today for your Xbox or your Nintendo machine or, or your game station. Uh, we are, we're thinking about ways to, to, to tackle that problem, but we're not there yet. Great. We just had the chat freeze on me here for a minute. so. Um, while it's, it's frozen, do you have anything else that you might add uh, to maybe someone who's never, uh, never ever purchased a system before? Um, things that they might want to look for and identify when they purchase uh, a system. Yep. In my, I've only been the CEO of Content Watch for a, for a little over a year, and each time I have a visitor come to the office, I ask them about the fact if they have kids or if they have kids in the home or if they know an affected person. And usually the answer is, is that they do have kids in the home or that they do know an affected person. And then my second question is, what have you done about it? And the common response is basically nothing. Uh, people tend to react to the issue if they don't proactively try to solve the problem. Um, in the case of an addict, obviously there's a, a proactive approach. In the case of a child, it's a reactive approach. But you can go to, to websites like Top Ten Reviews and get a list of all the, uh, all the viable solutions that are out there and compare side by side with the features that you deem important. I have a, a friend who's very, very interested in the uh, instant message conversations going on between his son and others. So he has an alert set up with NetNanny. Anytime there's any kind of inflammatory language, anytime there's any kind of a grooming language, and grooming language refers to language where a person is asking another questions that seem to be more like a, a sexual predator, where you might ask, uh, where do you live? What's your name? How old are you? What school do you go to? That type of language is then flagged and alerts are sent to the parent via email. 
The reason that we have the ability to do, to do that is because we employ a full-time linguist who takes common phrases, acronyms, abbreviation, slang, anything from the Urban Dictionary, and basically creates rule sets such that when those words or terms or abbreviations appear, either in an instant message chat or in a search uh, window, we can flag them and then indicate that something is going on. So if you're concerned about any of those, those issues, cyberbullying, sexual predator, uh, inappropriate web page viewing, having a, a solution that proactively alerts you when red flags are being raised is, is one critical uh, feature to look for. Proxy web page blocking is another feature to look for. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing blocking is, is another feature to look for. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing was made common or very popular in the days of Napster when everybody would just start trading the, the music files they had on their hard drive. Well today, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing is used to trade video and photo and, and music. Typically it's illegal activity or it could be pornographic images or pornographic videos. You want to have a solution that will block peer-to-peer -peer file, sh file sharing. It's important really because of the uh, illegal nature of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, but when you open up your hard drive, which is basically what you're doing, you're exposing all of your information to hackers. You're exposing your, your own computer to being uh, infected with images or videos that you may not know exist, but could be illegal. Um, those are two or three of the common um, features that you may want to look for, and there are many others. If you're a consumer or, or customer of our company, we have a toll-free number you can call during the hours of 8 and 5 Mountain Time, where any of our operators will take you through and, and tell you how to use NetNetty and show you how to set up any of these alerts or any of these other features that you feel important to use. Great. Uh, very helpful. Uh, another question that came through, uh, kind of also has a, a story attached, but uh, uh, the question was, I heard that some kids at school in, in Utah specifically got around the school filters, and this goes along with what you talked about with language. They said that they got around the school filters by using Spanish instead of English. And her question is, does uh, Net Nanny take into effect different languages, uh, uh, of course, outside of English? Uh, we are working more toward combining uh, our English language coverage with other languages. We are not perfect at it. And as you've seen in the press, neither was the solution that was, was being used at the Park City School District. So it is a loophole at this point. However, you have the ability in, in Net Nanny to set up a blacklist or a whitelist where you can determine if there's a web, a web page that is inappropriate and you can block that just by default regardless of the content. And you know, there, that reminds me of an, another issue. The other issue is that there are lots and lots of blogs out there and there lots of information in Wikipedia and other wikis like it. And we refer to those types of blogs or those types of web pages as user-generated content. That means that someone besides a company has created the, the information there. There are a lot of bad blogs out there. There are some great blogs, of course, but there are some blogs that are dedicated to uh, inappropriate subjects. And there are a lot, there's a lot of information in Wikipedia, for example, that I don't think you'd want uh, an addict or a child looking at. So in addition to blocking inappropriate web pages, when NetNanny uh, an analyzes in real time the text that you're typing in your search engine, if we can indicate that, for example, you go to Wikipedia and type chicken breast, Chicken breast is a topic that we usually yields uh, pages about cooking. If you type uh, breast cancer, those, that will yield topics that are medical in nature. If you simply type breast in Wikipedia, you'll get a web page that's probably inappropriate for the addict or for the child. And in that case, we block that page, having not blocked the first two. So you want to look for a, a, feature, a solution that will give you the ability to block wikis and blogs because they're not all just uh, great content. Great. And, uh, you know, I think that's as far as questions go. Um, we don't have any more right now, but we have, I, I wanted to make one last comment. This is actually Dawn's comment. And maybe you can end on this idea, too. But she said, technology is moving so fast. People need to understand that there no, the no filters will be perfect. So you have to take pro protective measures even if you have a good filter. And I thought maybe you could say some last thoughts on that or anything else you wanted to say um, before we end your, your presentation. Yeah, you've got to, yes, you've got to set rules and, or establish rules for the child or for the addict. And they have to be a little bit willing to, to go along with, with those rules. We know that there are no perfect solutions out there. If someone really wants to get, a, get their hands on pornography, they certainly can. They just use someone else's computer or phone. Um, so there is not a perfect solution. One of the things that we're working on today is image filtering. There are lots of, uh, go to YouTube and you'll, you can get pornography easily on YouTube. 
Um, we're looking for ways to, to filter images and photos because that is probably the, it, it is one of the most difficult things to do technologically, and it is something that we're adamantly uh, opposed to, to allowing, of course. So we are working, we're doing research on, on future uh, trends. If you have any suggestions, you're welcome to email me and tell me what you think. Uh, you can go to our webpage and get resources that I've talked about, the Attic Sponsor uh, free license. Uh, next month we'll also have that education and training, which we have yet to name, but it will be about training parents on, it's an internet safety program where you can become certified. And I think uh, I'll end with that. Okay. Thanks very much.